Okay, this is Jeff Head on the Jeff Head Scale Modeling and Naval YouTube channel or the just Jeff Head channel. Today we're going to talk about a couple of aircraft uh, that are critically important for the United States Navy and its allies. Uh, what you're looking at here are two uh, different versions that have not been adopted yet of the V-22 Osprey. Now the V-22 Osprey uh, has been adopted by the U.S. Marines in large numbers, also in significant numbers by the U.S. Air Force for search and rescue as well as special operations, and by the U.S. Navy for uh, carry-on-board delivery. And that's, that's an important function because carry-on-board delivery brings parts and people uh, to aircraft carriers in particular, but to any ship. And I'm sure one of the reasons that they chose the V-22 is because of its vertical takeoff and landing capability, which means it can do that function as well as uh, other functions uh, with destroyers, amphibious assault ships, LPDs, LHAs, LHDs. Uh, anyway, those, those three have been adopted. But now we're in an era uh, that is a critical era where vertical takeoff and landing and short takeoff and landing has become critically important with the introduction of the F-35B. The F-35B is the vertical takeoff and landing version of the F-35 uh, fifth generation stealth strike fighter that the U.S. has put out and its allies are buying. And in particular, the F-35B is now being used to equip uh, United States Navy LHD and LHA amphibious assault ships, which are in fact large larger than World War II aircraft carriers, uh, flat deck aircraft. Now they historically have carried a squadron of uh, Harrier twos, uh, but the Harrier two, despite its uh, many good qualities, including the fact the United States Navy uh, Marines put uh, uh, strong radar on it and AMRAAM missiles so that it had a much stronger self-defense, uh, it still was uh, not stealth, and it was uh, lower than Mach 1 speed. The F-35B is a uh, supersonic, stealthy aircraft that can carry much more ordnance than the Harrier, and uh, basically uh, is a fifth-generation aircraft that is going to be built in large numbers for us, the United States, and our allies. And there's a... Navy version for uh, large aircraft carriers uh, to use uh, with with catapults, and there's uh, an Air Force version. But let's look at this version of the Osprey first. This is what I'm calling, and has been called by others, the SV-22. And if you look back here towards the back of this aircraft, or on the side, you can see what its main function is. On each side, it has two uh, torpedoes and then on the bottom of the aircraft uh, right in that area let's see if I can get it to focus in there pretty good you can see the uh, sonar buoy uh, ejection and it carries uh, a large number of them so you have an aircraft here that is an anti-submarine warfare aircraft that has uh, significantly longer range than the MH-60s, the Seahawks, that are used. Now, that's not to discount those uh, helicopters, but those helicopters range their ability to stay on station for long periods of time uh, are significantly limited compared uh, to this aircraft. This aircraft uh, will give the LHDs and LHAs as well as our allied friends, particularly when those aircraft are uh, set up to operate as aircraft carriers because uh, 
the USS America LHA class and the USS Wasp LHD classes can carry 20 to 24 F-35Bs and in doing so they become carriers and they need that long distance coverage uh, for anti-submarine warfare. The US Navy used to use the S-3 for that and then inexplicably and in my opinion uh, mistakenly those aircraft were retired early. I suppose uh, the reasoning was that the Cold War was over and we didn't have to worry about submarines anymore, but that is just simply not the case. The Russians are still out there, and as uh, events have shown lately, uh, they're not really our friends, and the Chinese are building uh, many submarines, most of them conventionally powered, but they're working very hard uh, to, develop, to develop new nuclear-powered attack submarines, and they're having some success. Uh, they are getting to a stage where they're uh, equal to the Los Angeles cat class, perhaps, in their latest ones, but they are building newer ones that are going to be more stealthy, and they still may be a generation or two behind us, uh, but one of the greatest threats to carriers throughout World War II and since has been the submarine threat, and the S-3 and this SV-22 uh, would give our carriers a squadron of aircraft. There were 10 S-3s on each major uh, aircraft carrier. They could get way out on the threat axis and begin hunting submarines uh, hundreds of miles away from the carrier. And uh, that's an important function uh, to hold those submarines, enemy submarines, in threat. So one of the proposals that should definitely be made and in my opinion adopted is to get these SV-22s, these Ospreys, in a strong anti-submarine warfare uh, version out on the carriers with 8 to 10 on each carrier and on the LHDs with uh, 3 to 4, preferably 4, on each of those uh, uh, vessels. Uh, and even in the amphibious assault role, because uh, that long-distance anti-submarine warfare capability is really invaluable. And then use the uh, MH-60Rs uh, for the closer-in uh, submarine warfare off of the frigates and the destroyers, and uh, let the long-distance be done by this and our allies. This goes true equally for the Japanese and the Koreans, and the Japanese uh, Izimu class uh, carriers that are going to carry 24 or more F-35Bs and the Docto Korean carriers that will carry 20 plus, as well as the Australians should they put them on the can bearers and the Indians. And I honestly think uh, this would be a good aircraft for the uh, British Queen Elizabeth class. They've got a very good, uh, probably the best, uh, helicopter in the Merlin uh, for that, but these uh, outrange even that. So there is one of the proposals. Let's get this SV-22 uh, built, and please read the commentary and description of this video because it gives you an idea of the things to do you can do with your congressman and others to try and make this happen. Now let's move to another one, and this one in my opinion, is even more important than the SV-22. This is a model that I've built, and uh, uh, adopted and varied an SV-22 into what I call uh, the EV-22. And the EV-22 is a AEW version of the aircraft. Uh, as you can see, it's got a relatively large electronic controlled and scanned aperture radar on the top of the aircraft. Uh, so the aircraft would need to have some significant additions in terms of uh, the strength to carry that thing and also pressurizing the cabin so that this can fly uh, higher than your normal SV-22 flight carries it. We'd want to get these things up 30, 35,000 feet in the air and have a AEW function that allows them uh, to see potential threats 
at a significantly lo longer range than a helicopter AEW aircraft, which our allies and our uh, uh, potential competitors are using. Uh, this is not as strong as the E-2D or E-2C uh, Hawkeye that's on our carriers, particularly the E-2D, which is the advanced Hawkeye. Uh, but it is much stronger uh, than, let's say, the uh, Merlin aircraft that they're using with the crow's nest or uh, what the uh, Japanese and others are using to this point. I believe the Japanese would jump all over a proposal like this if it was made, and I'm hoping that they will consider it for their Izimu class and that the Koreans will consider it for the Docto, the Australians for the Canberra. These are tailor-made to, uh, to provide strong AEW coverage, probably out to six to 700 miles uh, in terms of range. And with that type of radar and that size, uh, very clear definition uh, all the way down to the wave tops. So what you have here is an aircraft that then would have electronic operators just like the E-2 and uh, but then land and take off vertically from the America or WASP class ships. And once again, a squadron of three or four of these on board these carriers would allow us to have uh, a couple of them up at a time whenever needed. One relatively close to the carrier and another uh, somewhere out on the major threat axis. And uh, this is so important I can't express it enough. Uh, if you're going to put uh, two billion dollars worth of aircraft on an air on a on a ship that cost uh, two to three billion dollars itself and carries you know uh, a couple of thousand sailors and, uh, and even more when you put Marines on it, uh, then you better take the best care you can of it. And the uh, air threat to these ships has gotten much stronger than it used to be. And so you want to find potential threats, meaning attacking jets, uh, aircraft, uh, like the H-6K, for example, from uh, China, before they can launch their missiles. So uh, I, I can't express strongly enough how important this aircraft is and uh, the, the great need we have for them as we put F-35Bs on these carriers and make those carriers uh, stronger than the carriers that are coming out from the Japanese, uh, excuse me, from the uh, Chinese right now. They are desperately looking for stealth aircraft and they are desperately looking to have a carrier that can have a stronger AEW uh, uh, capability than what they have now and we already have this. Bell has already made a proposal. Uh, I have uh, increased the size and uh, capabilities of this. Now with these aircraft of course they would never be sitting here landed like this. They uh, uh, they would be landed with their, oops, excuse me, their nacelles uh, turned up and landing vertically, uh, like I'm showing here on this SV-22 right now. Let me, let me put them back down. So there you have it, folks. Read the description. Contact your congressmen and senators, and also your friends. Uh, I'd say from lieutenant commander and above and urge them uh, to push uh, for these uh, opportunities because we desperately will need them to protect those ships uh, which we are going to put so much investment into. So there you have it, 172nd scale. By the way, both of these are Italeri SV or V-22 Osprey uh, aircraft that I have uh, uh, changed over to these, conver uh, to these variations. This is Jeff Head. Again, contact the folks you know. Spread this around. Uh, this is a critical thing, and I'm, I'm certainly hoping the Japanese bite. Uh, I think if they do, and if we do, uh, because we've got, you know, 8 to 10 LHD and LHA ships that are going to be out there able to be 
smaller carriers, but still carriers with those F-35Bs that are stronger than most of our competition, if not all of it. Jeff Head, you guys have a good one. God bless you, and uh, please subscribe if you have a mind. I've got a bunch of one 350th scale ships that I have put out in all of the various configurations and task forces that, that we and our uh, competitors and other navies use. Thanks for watching.